Hey guys, what's up? Today on Night Fury Nova, we are actually gonna work on the Corvair. So I'm gonna pop off the um, bellows and um, I'll show you what those are in one second. So the one thing I find really interesting about this um, Corvair, uh, you know, I've owned the Nova for a long time and um, if there's a million parts for it, it's all well documented. It's easy to work on everything. It's, it's the design is like pretty good. Uh, but these Corvairs, man, I haven't owned this very long, so I might be wrong, but um, I feel like when I'm working on it, that GM, it had to be a nightmare for them. It seems such a simple concept, right? You have an air-cooled engine. There's no, you know, air-cooled seems simple, right? Rear engine, I don't know why they chose that. But um, after you start working on it, you realize that GM, as they designed it, and they were probably like, shit how do we fix this or how do we make this work or it had to be an engineering nightmare because the air cooled thing is great but it, they had to enclose the entire engine inside of uh shrouds to get airflow across the engine right because there's no way to get airflow across the cylinder heads without it being enclosed or sticking out in the air somewhere and then by putting it in the rear of the car they had to come up with some type of differential to to drive the wheels from the rear, right? So the differential's in front of the engine, and then in front of the differential is the transmission. So the whole thing is awkward as hell because the engine has to drive through the differential to the transmission and then back to the differential to turn the wheels. So that had to be interesting to, to design but then putting the um transmission all the way in the rear means there's a six foot shift linkage all the clutch um it, all the clutch cables and the shifter and everything else it's like six to seven feet away in the back and there's levers if you if you go under this car man there's an entire ducting system that's covering all this shit under there it's like there's the shift mechanism, there's the clutch cable, there's the, um, uh, there's like levers because when you push the clutch, it has to reverse the action. It's like unbelievable amount of crap in this car to just to get it to work when it seems like such a simple thing. But, um, yeah, man, that's my two cents. I feel like, um, it was probably a design nightmare, which is why it only lasted, you know, nine years, I think 60 to like 69, they made these things. So, that's my two cents. That's just what I think, but um, maybe not. I don't know, man. It just seems like so overly engineered for an air-cooled uh, car. Um, the Nova is a hundred times easier to work on. So, all right, hope you enjoy this video. All right, so let's get under the car and I'm gonna show you guys these um, bellows and uh, how they work. All right, so on a Corvair, since it is an air-cooled engine, um, it's a flat six, right? So you have three cylinders here, three cylinders here. And this is your um, fan that pushes the air down through the, the engine, um, all these covers. And it's just an air cooled, think of it like an air cooled motorcycle engine. The air goes under these covers and it's supposed to exhaust out. These right here, these are flaps. You can actually see the, one of the cylinder heads there. So this flap, if the engine's cold, this flap should, should be closed and the engine will warm up quickly. And then as the engine warms up, it opens up, lets more air out. Um, so there's one on each side. There's also one on this side. So you can see here, same thing. So each bank of cylinders has its own flap and that opens and closes based on temperature. So there's this thing called a bellows, which is this. And all this is, is a thermostat. And what it does is it mounts in here under this. And there's a little nut that goes on the back here. And this little connector here connects to the flap. And all this thing does, it's gonna be hard while I'm holding the phone, is um, it opens and closes based on temperature. And and so since this is mounted here, it'll expand and it'll open. 
and it'll contract and it'll close. So what happens though, since these are old, these are filled with um, like a refrigerant that think of it as like water. So when it gets hot, it boils and evaporates and it causes it to expand. And then it gets cool, condenses, and it wants to go back to like a, a liquid state and pull closed. So you heat it up, it starts to expand because it starts to evaporate. Um, and yeah, that's all it is. So it's filled with like, um, I think this is like maybe an alcohol solution, but it's, it's basically like a refrigerant that goes from liquid to a vapor. Now what happens is this thing is normally open with nothing in it because it's kind of just like a spring. So what happens is the bellows, they get stuck wide open and um, that's a sure sign that the refrigerant has leaked out. So I looked at this closely. Let me see if I can get this up here for you guys. And I was looking for a leak and sure enough, here we go. There it is right here. Let's see if I can get the camera to focus on this. There it is, cracked. You can actually see multiple cracks, right? So right there, refrigerant leaked out and um, this thing went open. So you can see it's just corroded, man, it's old. So yeah, that's how that works. Now, there's not much I can do for this. I was gonna try to repair it, but that isn't gonna happen because I can't solder that. That thing is just old and ruined. So I'm gonna get some new ones and try and get this thing back to working. All right, so I'll show you this while I've got this cover off. There's one of your cylinder heads and here's your, your head, right? This is the exhaust coming out here, right? Comes right to the muffler. And what's cool is it's like a motorcycle. Think of like a Harley or something. There's your um, push rod tubes. Right, so they ride on the cam in there and they push, they got, you got your lifters and everything, just like a, like a small block Chevy, but these things are only sealed with O-rings. So they're prone to oil leaks because the O-rings will uh, start to seep oil. So yeah, that's pretty cool. That's all it is, man. Independent rear suspension. I got a differential oil leak, but I, it's coming from the rear differential seal, so that's something else I gotta look at. Um, the other cool thing is this, this, these blocks, they're all aluminum. And they use them in airplanes because they're lightweight. They make most of their power around 3,600 RPM, which is perfect for cruising in an airplane. And they're ultra reliable, lightweight, no water. Um, let me show you what else we got here. All right, so this belt, it's kind of cool the way they do this. They run this belt down around, goes down around the crank down there. So it's all bent up. They were prone to um, slipping off because of the crazy angles that they have to deal with. Um, this is the mechanical fuel pump. So there's a cam. That a lifter that rides down there on the cam and it just pumps, pumps, pumps for the carburetor, which maintains about five to seven PSI. And um, yeah, it works pretty good. And we got the choke. This thing has an automatic choke on it. That works pretty good. So yeah, man, that's it. Hope you learned something today. All right, so I'm gonna take this other side off, this other cover right here. Hi. <laughs> all right, so we are gonna take this off. So don't lose all my sockets. It's only held on by a few screws here. And I'm just taking off the air cover that 
directs the air back towards these bellows and towards these vents. Anyone else would use a drill, but I don't use any power tools ever. I'm actually curious what this is going to look like under here because I haven't had these off since we bought the car. And you can see the push rod tubes and some other stuff in there. So, let's see. Alright. There's a couple other screws holding this thing on. I'm going to need my Phillips. still good all right so i'll show you this one okay oh there's a cylinder head temp sensor i was wondering about that um no oil leaks that's amazing damn actually looks pretty good um that's a tiny cylinder head <laughs> I'm used to a small block Chevy cylinder head, man. These things are tiny. Jeez. Okay, so we are looking straight up. And there's the cylinder, or valve cover. Um, this is number one cylinder, and you can see there, they actually provided you with a cylinder head temp sensor. So that's pretty cool. I, I think that triggers the dummy light up on the dash for overheat. So I'm not mistaken, it's like around 500 and some degrees, I think, maybe, that this trips. Because these cylinder heads were made to handle some pretty high heat. So yeah, I'm going to try and get that working. I'm going to see if that works. Uh, but otherwise, it looks pretty good under here. Let me show you this bellows. Okay, so what I'm doing is heating these up. And believe it or not, this one I believe is still working. So give me a minute, I'm going to heat this up and we will watch it um, expand and contract. good one and the bad one pretty obvious all right so there you have it that's the bellows and that's what maintains the um temperature inside the uh cylinder head area so instead of water you have these flaps that are opening and closing to try and maintain around 250 degrees inside the cylinder head area so that's it man i hope that was cool um hopefully somebody out there with a corvair can see this and see how they work so you can see now it's really contracted um it's pulled tight so yeah that's all it does it just drives this thing open and close all right guys so i hope you like this video stay tuned for more and uh i'll uh, i'll try and post more on here next time i do something to the uh, nova um i'm gonna document everything on this channel so take care guys see ya